You heard me? Like, this is my type of vibe when it comes to beats. I ain't no trap shit. But I just like, you know. I ain't know where it's gonna start. Push. We're here with Push. Yeah. Push Studio, FTH. Uh, thank you for letting me come to your studio. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, why don't you go ahead and get this started, man? Why don't you introduce yourself? That shit funny. Hold on. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking shit. My name is. I go by Zaire. That's my middle name. Um, But I also go by Push when it comes to production. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. I'm 27 years old. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I'm 27 years old. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. 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 I'm from film you know what i'm saying so i'm just getting into the producing about two three years ago you know just trying to get work on my left my right good i'm working on my left you feel me that's, that's, that's all that's it that's yeah. that's up, so um when did you first fall in love with music honestly i kind of been in love with music my whole life based off of my older brother my older brother is a artist named picasso and he does music himself so just watching the evolution of him being an eight-year-old artist rapping, going from eight year old and I'm growing with him. Now we 15, 16, he's 17, he's still rapping. So I always been a little music and the art of music, watching him uh, basically just express himself musically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that led to me listening to other artists like T.I. Uh, that used to be one of my favorite artists. Still is a great artist, but just growing with my brother and seeing uh, the evolution of him, it just made me realize like, he might be better than T.I., you know what I'm saying? Not better, but just a different sound, a different art, a different feel. And it's something more relatable to me because I guess that's my brother. We've been through the same struggle, you feel me? So, like, music has always been a part of my life, you feel me? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, when did you start producing? I started producing by, what is 2020? By 2017, uh, July, June. And um, the reason of me producing was it just came upon my brother looking for beats. Uh, he was just tired of producers not sending him beats uh, on a consistent basis. You know what I'm saying? So it was time we'd get in the studio. He'd be like, damn, I need some beats. So I just got up one day. I was up. Shit, I had a little change. I'm like, fuck it, I'm finna go buy a beat machine. I went to Best Buy, went and bought a um, program called Machine. You know what I'm saying? I bought the hardware and the software. It was like $700 at the time. I didn't know what I was doing at all. But one thing I did know was I know how to edit music videos and I can kind of engineer a little bit, watch my brother. So I feel like everything was kind of parallel. So I was like, if such and such could do it, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm smart. He ain't that smart. <laughs> he seemed kind of dim. So it's like, I know I'm smart. Let me do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not to take nothing away from nobody, but it's just like, I'm brilliant. I can do whatever. I can do anything these niggas doing. So let me get into the beats. And from there, just like, we here today. You know what I'm saying? I made several beats. I had shit on the radio. I produced a whole album for Picasso that we have unreleased called The Round Table. So like shit, nigga just working, bro. Keeping my head in the water, trying to get better, bro. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Now you um, mentioned something that you also edit videos, right. and you see it's kind of parallel. So right. talk to some of the um, similarities of editing videos hmm. and making beats or editing All right. Videos. Um, the similarities to me are basically what you see here. Um, bars. I mean, you can probably go to a close up or whatever, maybe. But you know, uh, bars, lines, uh, it's just audio and visual, you know what I'm saying? So the visual, you gotta go out and get the footage and and turn it and convert it into the program, which you see the bars, like you have in the music, you know what I'm saying? So the same thing, you got the audio, you got the track outs, layers, it's all layers, that's all it is. So if I had to break down any uh, upcoming producer or any upcoming videographer or engineer, anything it may be, it's nothing but layers. You know what I'm saying? I look at life the same way, the layers. You feel me? It's levels to life. Like, you have to get done with this layer before you go to the next one, and to the next one, et cetera, et cetera. You feel me? Yeah. Um, so, what is your production workflow, bro? Workflow. Uh, break that down for me. Okay, um, let's say you're gonna start making beats. 
right. do you start with a loop? Do you start right. with the drum pattern? Right. Do you start with the melody? Right. And, and what's your workflow from there? All right, most of the time I look for a dope melody, a dope loop, you know what I'm saying? Find a dope loop that I can kind of vibe to and kind of some catch it that I can hear somebody rapping on. And then basically just build a drum pattern after that, just some dope catchy, not too much, just something simple and clean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I start with the loop, add the drum, the uh, hi hats first, then the snares, then the kicks, add a couple 808s if needed, you know? And then bounce down, export it, send it off. <laughs> The artists like it, we create history, you know what I'm saying? If they don't, I go to the next beat, you know what I'm saying? It's simple. Yeah. Um, how many beats have you made in your career, bro? Uh, the last two, three years, I would say about two to three hundred, you know what I'm saying? Not nothing crazy. Two to three hundred, just, I haven't kept all of them. I probably kept 60 to 75 beats out of all of those, you know what I'm saying? That was used. But, you know, it's only been two to three years. I got a long way to go, you feel me? <laughs> I fought with the flute. I'm a big fan of the flute. Let me see. Pick, I can pick this up one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Right. What up, bro? What's going on, bro? Uh, interview. Huh? So I'm doing an interview with Cool. Oh, shit. Uh, CEO you Cool. You finna pull up? Nah, pull up. I can. Yeah. Alright. Alright. All right. Yeah. 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 That shit lit though. Alright. So the question was Back. Um, What are some of your favorite instruments? Um, I like the flute a lot, you know what I'm saying? The flute just add a kind of vintage feel, you know what I'm saying? Kind of um what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of Egyptian feel. They kinda of give you that rich, that opulent, um, make you think of where you came from type, you know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of my outlook on it, you know what I'm saying? I know everybody might have their own perspective, but I like the flute. I fold the piano, of course, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get into learning the piano. I know the basics, uh, the keys, A through E, if that's right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. All right. I think I know the keys. <laughs> well, you know, practice makes perfect, man. I'm, I'm going to keep going, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to stop. <laughs> feel me? Um, have you ever had any formal training in music? Or, uh, or no training at all, just play by ear, you know what I'm saying? It sound good, I feel like it's not in the wrong key, I'm gonna play it. Until somebody else comes and say, hey bro, you need to change that. And I take that and I appreciate it <laughs> and change it. <laughs> so a lot of people look at stuff when they when people say something to them and they think people just talking down when really they like, it's knowledge is power. They might know something you don't know. And that one little thing can take you to the next level, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my homeboy OG Double, by the way, cause when I first started making beats, we was working on the same program, and I was always stuck. Like, I make a loop, and then I make the whole beat, but I don't know how to stretch it out. And he taught me this one thing, I just sit and watch him, and he used to always tell me, like, do this, do that. And I always be, like, on some, nah, you don't know what you're talking about, nigga. But deep down inside, once I finally just let go of my ego and just did what he said, it took me to that next level, and I'm like, oh, shit. Now that I know how to do this, I can create a whole beat. Now I can send it to an artist. Now we can create a song. So it just helped me out just listening. So always be a, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, be open to information, you know what I'm saying? Don't let your ego drown you out and make you miss out on opportunity, you know what I'm saying? And even the opportunity, make you miss out on that knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's my first interview, bro. I don't talk, I don't talk to niggas. <laughs> I have my and I lost. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. Um, as, Shit, as and now uh, uh, on the rise producer, what advice do you have for young artists out here coming up? Don't stop, man. Perspective is key, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. <clears throat> know what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Not only know what you're doing, be excited about what you're doing. Um, don't stop, you know what I'm saying? Shit, that's it, for real. Keep that drive, you feel me? Because ain't nobody gonna have that drive for you. Ain't nobody gonna come say, hey, do this, you gotta get right. Nobody, nobody. You gotta be your inspiration. Stay inspired, that's all I, that's all I can say. You know what I'm saying? Um, who are some of your favorite producers? Uh, right off, uh, the first person to come to mind is Metro Boomin. He says, you know, he fuck with everybody. You don't fuck with Metro, you ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with Sunday Digital. It seemed like he kind of got more into the artist side 
the last couple of years though, but he's still a dope producer, you know what I'm saying? And you can tell the hooks he come with, like, like he's just hard. Like, when you produce, it's kind of easy to be a ghostwriter too, because you kind of got the feel, you know what kind of feel you want to go with the beat. So it's kind of get an artist kind of leeway. Like you tell the artist, hey, this kind of feel I care, but if you hear something else, go your way, of course. But if we can bring this to life, that'd be great. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like with this beat, like, it give me a kind of slow, serious feel. So I will let the artist know, like, I need a serious feel, real life, real situation. You know what I'm saying? But if you hear something else, go your way. They might hear the beat and they might think about fucking a bitch. You know what I'm saying? And it might be great once it's done. So shit, like I said, perspective is key. Just fall in your bag, stay in your bag. You know what I'm saying? Um, what are some of the programs you use to make beats work? Uh, the first program I ever used was called Machine. Um, machine, I got the software and the hardware. I can pull it up. But I always want to get into Fruit Loop because I always see the big producers fucking with Fruit Loop. You know what I'm saying? So once I finally did start fucking with Fruit Loop, I realized that you can fuck a machine inside of Fruit Loop. You know what I'm saying? Like a plug-in. So I just always stuck with Fruit Loop from there to say I can use both. One, why not? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, would you prefer to make beats with a uh, MPC or with uh, a piano? Uh, MPC, I guess because the drum pad and more is what I'm focused on right now. You know what I'm saying? Once I get into the melodies and create loops myself, I focus the piano. Yeah. What are some of the artists um, in the city that you've worked with? In the city, uh, producing wise or uh, uh, video? Producing wise. Producing wise. Antonio um, Marquise, uh, he hard. He fought with us. Uh, it go by CC Creative Collective. Uh, him and my partner DJ from uh, elementary school. I feel like I'm stuttering, doing too much. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Tony Marquis, C Hart, um, Picasso, of course, um, Meek and Nicole, uh, Prince, artist named Prince from Mobile, He Hart, um, producer. Uh, Picasso produces well, if y'all didn't know. That's I get a lot of my sauce from him. <laughs> But he produced some shit for uh, Honeycomb Brazen. It's on Honeycomb latest track, and he produced some shit for Picasso and No Cap, Mirror Mirror. Honeycomb Braids is called uh, Yeah Yeah Yeah. It's on his new uh, tape he just released. Free Honeycomb, free No Cap. You know, shout out to Mobile. We out here, bro. Mobile on the map right now. Shout out to them boys. Hey, man. Uh, as someone who's been in the, in the Mobile music scene for um, ten plus years, uh, right. what do you think about the success of? of these uh, recent artists? I ain't gonna lie, man, I love it, bro. I love where we at right now because like, like I said, like I was saying earlier, bro, it's layers, bro. It's shit about nothing but layers, bro. We seen success, success in our city from Rich Boy, you know what I'm saying? From c now we seen people hit certain uh, peaks, you know what I'm saying? So to see that and see people surpass that, it's like, nigga, we got plenty of places to go. We got plenty of uh, time, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people rush and think it's supposed to be an overnight success when it's not. It's like, you gotta put time in this shit, you gotta put, you know, energy in this shit, you gotta put dedication in this shit, you feel me? So like, to see the city, a mobile, where we at now, I love that shit, it's lit. I just know we're gonna continue to grow. I'm trying to open up this film industry down here and let people see that we don't gotta go to Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? Not to take it away from the beats, but that got something to do with the beats too. Produ pa, Petro, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, the movie, I got into the production shit as well for my film. So when it comes to certain scenes, I need certain fields. I can create that myself. I don't have to go to no outsource and go to niggas in Cali, go to niggas out here to do so. I can do that and then Picasso can master it and we can score it ourselves. You feel me? So I love where to sit at. I just, we just gotta keep going. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say. Keep going. Everybody keep grinding. Shit, all the artists, y'all time won't come, bro. You feel me? Are there any differences between making a beat for artists and making a beat for a film? Difference, yeah, I would say it's a difference, uh, most definitely. The difference I would say is the structure, you feel me? So when you structure uh, a song or a track for an artist, I would structure it verse, uh, hook, verse, hook, or hook, verse, hook, you know what I'm saying? Or however it should be structured, how the artist want it, you know what I'm saying? But move is just like, it, could, it may be like a four bar count where you only need 15 seconds to 20 seconds for film. So you just create a quick, quick sound, boom, it's done. You know what I'm saying? And you can even turn that into a, a beat and let an artist get on it to add to the soundtrack for the movie. You feel me? Yeah. So there's plenty of ways to do it. <laughs> what advice do you have for young producers? Young producers. 
Uh, just be curious, man. Um, soak up information. Be a sponge. You know what I'm saying? Get around other producers. Don't don't be in a cage. Don't be by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Thinking, oh, I'm finna do everything by myself. Like, nah. Fuck with other producers. Don't be scared to reach out. You know what I'm saying? Reach out to other producers who've been doing it. Like, let them know. I want to shadow you. I want to learn. When you let people know you want to learn, they're willing to teach. But if you just sit back and and just be in your own cage by yourself, not fucking with people. They gonna feel like you already know, and they not gonna be willing to show you nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's my outlook on it. And like I say earlier, perspective is key. Shit, fall in your bag, and do you? <laughs> okay. Um, let's switch a little bit of the business side of producing. Um, how do you feel about selling beats online via beat stores and cash app versus selling beats face to face via your network? Me, honestly, I never solicited the fact that I produced. Like, a lot of people gonna see this interview right here and be like, damn, this nigga produced, what the fuck? <laughs> so shit, um, honestly, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. You know what I'm saying? I just know business-wise, me producing, if I'm fucking with an artist, shit, we gonna do a split sheet. We gonna make sure this shit's straight. We gonna make sure if you don't have a BMI or if you don't have a tune car, whatever you need to set up your music to get paid, you gonna get that so we can get paid together. I'm not gonna leave you out in the blind and I get paid off of your music, you know what I'm saying? So like, look into the business. Like, before you make a beat, before you make your next beat, <laughs> look into that business, you feel me? Cause you don't wanna miss out on your bag, you feel me? A lot of niggas miss out on their bag. All right, so uh, what are some of your plans for the uh, rest of 2020 producing-wise? Um, honestly, my number one goal with the production, production and producing, is to get, I ain't sure, honestly, cause that's not my main focus, producing, you know what I'm saying? But just thinking of it, when you first asked me that, first thing I could think about is shit, going number one with Picasso, shit, we get a track, you know what I'm saying? Get us a track, shit, you go number one, shit, that's a bottle pop for us, shit, and more than that, you know what come with us, big celebration. That's a, that's a major goal, shit, let's go number one. Yeah, so we can look, we're gonna look back on this interview after we go to one. You feel me? <laughs> and we're gonna celebrate. Me and you cool. <laughs> you feel me? Alright, follow me um Zaire251. Z-I-A-R-E 251. That's on Instagram, Facebook, Zaire Film Life Pyramid. P-E-R-R-Y-M-A-N. Y'all stay tuned, man. We working man. Of course. Y'all know I got a movie coming out <laughs> called Exit. <laughs> Shout out to my uh cousin, Dan Robinson. Uh Man, him started working on it January 4th, 2020. Our plan was to finish by April, but you know, this coronavirus shit came up, so y'all stay tuned, bro. We, we probably drop it. Uh, matter of fact, I ain't gonna tell y'all I'm gonna drop it. We, our head in the water, we swim, we work. So y'all stay tuned.